Hello viewers, Super GT here. Welcome back to some more Grand Turismo Sports action. This is the uh, Nations Cup, round number six, here at Mount Panorama, aka Bathurst. This was a really interesting race. But before that, roll the intro. Okay, let's have a look at the grid because this is group three and we all know that this group is actually the Ford GT group. But actually, we do have a Ford GT on par here. We're going to have a quick scan through, but it's not dominated by the Ford actually. There's a fair few other cars on offer. So yes, there are a few Fords, but there's plenty of drivers of the, the Lexus, the Mustang, the Mercedes and a couple of Corvettes here as well. I've personally gone for the Lexus, which seems to be my second default car after the Ford GT. So I'm going to show you the entire race because it's something a little bit different here. It's not a set amount of laps. You, you'll see there just at the bottom right of the screen above the fuel mixture, we have a time remaining. Now this, this makes things a lot more different. What if I had on 13th position? Uh, not great, but then again, the, the quality of drives in here is fairly high. Interestingly, we have PG Motorsport, who I unceremoniously rammed off in revenge in a previous video. But, you know, as long as we treat each other with respect this time around, I'm not going to hold a grudge. So we're going to continue with the race, as we should, up behind two Mustangs here. Now this race, because, because of the, the time factor, it's quite hard to judge the fuel, so we are going to have to monitor that as we go. So at the moment, not quite sure exactly when I'm meant to pit. So we'll keep a, keep an eye out for that because we do have to work out how many laps we're actually going to do based on that time. So it might not actually be completely obvious how this is going to work out. So because because I don't know how it's going to work out, I'm going to save fuel as much as I can. When I'm stuck behind these people like this. You can see there, I'm, I'm in setting two. So there's not much point in burning so much fuel when you're not going to get past anyway. I'm staying on these guys' tails quite easily and saving fuel at the same time, so I might as well do that. So through the dipper, down towards Forest Elbow, a really tricky circuit, Mount Panorama. One that I still can't really get right, even to this day, even despite doing so many laps around here. And onto the very long back straight. So kicking it back into power setting one, you do want that straight line speed. You don't want to get lost. You know you don't want to get out of no. You don't want to get out of the slipstream range into no man's land, basically. So I do want to remain within that sort of buffer of five, six temps behind at least. So I'm getting uh, sucked along the back straights. There are a fair few very long straights here, and of course you have the big mountain section. So big Corvette up right behind me. A couple of uh, cars I spotted just ahead and a bit of a moment. I'm going to have a big moment here, violently fishtailing on the exit of the final turn. I'm going to concede one position to the Corvette down to 14, but you see just how close the race is. So, you know, can't give up just yet. There's still always a chance for something very big to happen, and it probably does. It always does around here. So that's lap one done, and I used about 15% of fuel on that lap, so still just trying to work out exactly how much fuel I need from here to the end. And three minutes have gone. Okay, so nearly three minutes have gone, and I've used nearly 20% of fuel. So essentially, I've used. Oh my god, I'm going to get spun around there. So essentially, I've used. You can see there, as, as the 12 minute barrier has just been crossed, so we've used. 20% of fuel in 3 minutes, which would mean in 15 minutes I'm going to use 100%. So at this rate, I should be able to get to the end of that 15 minute timer without having to pit. The only problem is, it's not exactly a 15 minute race because if you cross the line, if the leader crosses the line before that 15 minutes, let's say he crosses on 14 minutes 59, then you're going to, everyone's going to have to go around again. So that is something we have to look at. And I think you probably will have to go around again because the lap time here is about two minutes. So probably crossed the line with about 14 minutes gone. 
and then we'll have to go around again. So loads of maths to do here. I suppose in 14 minutes you can do seven laps, so we're probably going to have to do eight laps at this rate. And at the moment, I'm coming up to finish the second lap, and I've only got six laps left of fuel. So I am going to have to fuel save a lot more than I am. Up the inside of the Corvette, it's a good move. The space was there, and he kind of fought it. And I'm going to go around the outside. Mercedes come back onto the circuit. How is that one going to play out? Halb Stark with a poor run, going to lose a couple of positions. Looking up the inside into the final turn, not quite going to happen there. Couldn't quite get enough momentum. It's a really close pack. Look how bunched it is now. Mercedes is very slow off the turn. But look up the inside. I don't think the move's on though. Into T1. And really breaking very early. And it kind of caught me out. So I just give the German a bit of a nudge in the rear end. In his Mercedes. And now everyone's going to tuck into that slipstream. Form a train down this back straight. Coming into turn two. So I've got a bit of a buffer now over the Frenchman behind. And we can begin to hopefully tag onto this group and maybe fuel save a little bit. Because it does look fairly marginal on fuel. So the, the German here having not having a good time on the on the previous let's say half a lap. Looks like he's uh, sort of barely in control of his car. So he's down to 12th. I think he started well inside the top 10. So coming through. Just turning in next to the tree. You get hooked up with the apex nicely. This section very easy to make a mistake. Kind of dip down, go as wide as you can, and kick back to that apex. Viper all over the place. There's not quite a space for me to go through. I'm looking for the move, and I've just given a bit of a nudge, and there was no way through in the end. So the German actually goes up a position, and I could quite follow him through in that exact situation there. So still in 13th. This is well started. So things are okay. Sometimes in these races you do have to kind of play the long game and just kind of wait for something to happen. It's not always worth forcing the issue too much. There is a very close pack ahead, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the seventh driver right behind me. In fact, you see the train there, we all pretty much nose to tail near enough, and to get a really big run here. That Viber does not seem very good on the straights unless he's fuel saving massively. Up the inside, going to gain a position up to 12th. Let's look now to try to get back on terms with the Mercedes driver ahead. We've lost uh, just over a second there, 1.2 the gap to 11th. So we're going to look to try to bridge that gap now. Hopefully that can happen. Normally it does when they are in such close attendance to each other, the drivers ahead. And again, the Mercedes driver with a big moment on the exit of the final corner. Losing traction, much like I did at the end of lap one. And I'm going to gain slightly over that. So gap now down to 0.7, and you see the moment for me. Is that going to be within slipstream range? Just monitoring the gap on the left-hand side of the screen, 0.7 is coming down slightly. How much of that is down to slipstream, I don't know. It might just be that the Lexus is slightly better in a straight line. So then into Quarry Bend, a very difficult corner. You have to get on the traction, get on the throttle as early as you can without breaking traction. Very easy to do though around there. So sitting pretty in 12th at the moment, just really biding my time. And just trying to work out what the hell is going on with regard to this fuel strategy. So we are coming up to halfway into the race. So 7 minutes 30 marks the half of the 15 minutes. As I say, we may well have to go around another lap whilst that 15 minute timer has depleted. So... There we go, we've gone beyond 7.30 and I've still got I've got above 50% of fuel. So I have saved more than well than the 50-50 split between time and fuel. But we're gonna see again, as I say, we don't we don't know how this is gonna work out. This is the really interesting thing here because I'm not sure if these guys are ahead of fuel saving or not. It's sometimes hard to tell. I, I think maybe that Viper I went past on the previous lap and was fuel saving because he was so slow, like ridiculously slow. So I think he might be playing the long game and trying to trying to keep more t uh, fuel in his tank and then hope that everyone else just runs out at the end because I still I don't know how this final lap is going to play out based on will it just be a straight 15 minutes or will you have to go around again I'm pretty sure that is it's in a way like the F1 uh, rules actually this Italian goes into the bits interestingly it's, it's, it's like F1 so if you cross the line with two seconds left to go then you have to go around again or in a qualifying sense in Formula 1 you get another lap is the right way to put it 
So the lead up, the Austrian, uh, 15 seconds ahead at this stage. It's actually a fairly close race. I, I suppose we're all pretty much on this straight at one moment, near enough. So, you know, the, the field spread isn't too big. And since I've got to A plus rating, since I've become an A plus rated pig on this game, the, the, the driving level, the skill rating, you know, really has become a lot higher. I've found it a lot harder to win. Even sometimes, even sometimes getting a top 10 is a really good result. And I think that I think that will apply here, actually. You know, 10th is just ahead of us, so there's still a chance. We could still get well into the top 10. Let me see about that. We're on lap number 5 now. So it's kind of... Um, it's gone into a lull a little bit, this race. We're still trying to work out what's going on with the fuel and with the timer. So I think not many people are quite sure exactly what to do here. But coming down the hill, flying through this section really easy to make a mistake. Keeping it in third gear, I was making the mistake of going down to second, where you do get better revs and theoretically better speed on the way out, but the car just wants to oversteer way too much. So keeping it in third for better stability through that section. And then down to second here, you do need second for the better drive out onto this back straight. And we've, we have three laps of fuel remaining and presumably three more laps left to do. In fact, actually, if I got down to 2.9, I will have to fuel save a lot more than I am. Maybe a bit of a lift and coast coming into these fast corners. The big braking zones. Braking on the 150, down three gears to second. Clipping the first apex, not quite. Important traction zone here, you see. Really tricky, actually. Um, sometimes I think in chase camera with control, it can be very di uh, difficult to to get on that throttle perfectly. I think that's sometimes where the wheel has an advantage. Another moment, you can see the front right tyre. This is, I suppose, a disadvantage of not being able to pit. Well, you can pit, but you're just gonna lose out. The fact that everyone's gonna have really worn tyres towards the end of this race. And that, again, that could be another factor here. And I think I've lost out quite a lot of this previous lap. Gap now to 1.4, uh, 1 nearly 1.5 to the German ahead and the gap now below a second to the Corvette driver behind. So I am I'm getting pulled towards the people behind rather than the ones in front at this current time, which isn't a good sign, especially as we come towards the latter stages of the race, where I ideally want to be moving forwards. So we're taking that corner nicely up into third, uh, short shifting uh, up into third gear and fourth to keep the car from uh, oversteering and getting too much wheel spin, especially as you're going kind of uphill there, it's very easy to do. Over the crest, just lifting here, car kind of goes a bit mental, but if you lift a little bit, it kind of uh, alleviates that somewhat. So come down the hill, trying to keep it close to the walls as possible without hitting them ideally. And a little bit quirky through there, but we've just about got the job done. Gap down to 0 0.7 to the driver behind, and I think I've gained maybe a tenth through the mountain section to the guy, be, uh, guy ahead, although he's now actually rising, getting it. The Mercedes drive getting a much better exit onto the Conrod Strait as we then come down towards the chase. So an interesting race here developing. We've got a group of about three or four behind. That gap is opening up to the people ahead. But we must never discount the chance that something could happen to the people ahead. Especially, as, as I say, I've said it many times, regarding the fuel, some people may well have misjudged it. Okay, so the Corvette very close behind. I'm not really going to go defensive, don't want to lose too much time. I don't think he's got the position there, or he's not close enough to quite go for a move into the final turn. Probably would rather sit behind and sit in my slipstream, get sucked along by me, and then uh, fuel save a little bit more. So, two laps presumably left to go. In fact, the timer is just under two minutes. This is going to be really interesting. Although the leader's 20 seconds ahead, I think the leader's going to cross the line with maybe 10 seconds of the race left to go. You can see they're just briefly going up to setting three on the fuel. I think I'm desperately trying to save a little bit more because I think I am below schedule at this moment. We do have to go around again. We are going to have to go around again. I'm pretty sure about that. So, 40 seconds there, the leader's 20 seconds ahead, he, the leader was a minute into his lap, so the, yeah, the leader is going to get around 
before that timer goes down. We are going to have to go around again for the eighth time. Now that does make things really interesting because I don't have enough fuel for two fuel, or one and a half more laps. I really am going to have to mega fuel save from here to the end. So coming down the hill, it doesn't look like I'm being dropped though, despite kind of trying to really fuel save a lot, short shifting and momentarily going into higher or leaner fuel settings. Coming down the hill into the forest elbow, really easy to overshoot that one on the brakes. I've hooked it up nicely. In fact, I think I gained on this lap towards the two Mustang drivers and the Mercedes driver ahead. Okay, here we go then. Corvette driver in my slipstream. I'm going to move to the right hand side. I, I see some uh, dust being kicked up. Okay, Corvette driver to the outside. He's on the left. Actually, what's going on here? I do not quite know. The Mustang and the Corvette spins across the circuit. One of the Mustangs goes off the track. He's going to come back on. Where is he going to come back on? Just about leaves me a space. And it's caused a massive incident behind. Oh my god, he come back onto the track. And I don't think anyone could quite judge where he was going. And it's caused a huge incident. I'm up into the 10th place as a result of that. The Viper driver comes through to 11th and I think the uh, the Corvette driver, the one in the yellow Corvette has lost out massively as a result of all that. I couldn't quite work out what happened there. So here we go then, we have got one more lap left to do. The leader not willing to slow down to make it only one more lap uh, or, or seven laps. He, he had to keep the pace up because he had someone right behind him. So we're going to have to go around again. You see here, going into lean setting four, that's how desperate I am here to save fuel. It's going to be really close, I think. And I've got a pack of wolves right behind me, hunting me down with, well, I've got 0.6 laps left to do, but I think I'm actually not quite that far around the track. I am going to have to fuel save massively here. It's up the inside. I'm going to give him a car with a bit of contact. And now I still have the inside line just about Still in setting four, and he's not going to go for it around the outside. So mega fuel saving on offer right now. Over the crest, through, flying through that corner. Now down to setting three. We're going to try to break away a little bit. We don't want that guy in our section coming down the lap straight. Six percent of fuel left to go. I need to get around maybe half the lap more. Plus, it's the high speed part of the lap where you're going to burn fuel a lot quicker. Down the hill, into the left, onto the back, straight. Need to get this one right. Can we break away from this guy behind? No, I don't think so. He's still less than four tenths behind. He's going to definitely be in that slipstream. I'm going to go into setting one. I'm going to have to do it, otherwise I'm going to get past by two, three or four cars here. At least two of them. The 4 GT now, coming out of nowhere. Look at him flying through that 4 GT. Absolute rocket in a straight line. Into the chase for the final time. Hitting that apex just about. I see someone going across the grass again. That's been a popular route throughout this race. Coming down then towards the final turn. Down to setting three. I've got 1% of fuel left remaining. Not much at all. Coming around the final turn. Am I just about going to get the job done? Yes. And the German's going to slow down on the line. I'm going to cross the line and go up into ninth. So wow, it really kicked off in the second half of that race. And we can have a look at the results there. Top two spots taken by the Lexus, actually. The Ford, the best Ford is in uh, third. So I think the Ford not good enough on this economy fuel run. This was a really interesting race. It really came down to sort of fuel management and just overall consistency. But there we go. A ninth place in the end. I do hope you enjoyed the video as always, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Subscribe for more if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos. And if you did enjoy, hit the like button. Thanks for watching as always. See you next time. Goodbye. Listen.